What's up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be showing you 10 of my favourite apps for October 2016. First up on this list we have Circle Sidebar. Now I tend to not actually like Sidebar apps, they tend to be a little bit clunky, they don't tend to look particularly good. But Circle Sidebar looks fantastic, it's got this kind of rotary effect, it reminds me of an old style phone. And you can then access all of these apps regardless of which app you're currently running. You can decide which side the sidebar will actually appear on. I do tend to keep it on the right just because there's more applications that use that material style bar and that often tends to interfere with the interaction of apps. You can scroll through this list and easily select or deselect which apps you actually want to appear in the sidebar. It also supports custom icon packs which is just brilliant. And if you unlock the pro version you can edit the order of all these apps and shortcuts as well. I've been using a lot of minimal home screens recently and Circle Sidebar is a really beautiful way of adding applications to your home screen. Next up we have a launcher called AP15. I'm actually really excited about this. I've seen a couple of people posting about this on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, by the way, my links are in the description. You're welcome. This is a launcher which simplifies everything. You've got no widgets, you've got no um, shortcuts or apps that you can add to the home screen. You just have this list of text and this is every single app installed on your device. I have quite a lot of apps installed because I'm constantly reviewing stuff, but if you've got, say, a normal amount like 10, 15, maybe even 20, then this is going to be even more efficient. The way that it deals with having loads of apps on your phone is really quite clever. It will make whichever apps you use the most bigger. So for example, I go into Canada Chrome, Clock and Contacts a fair bit. So these are much, much larger than the apps that I never go into. If you long press on the background, you get a couple of options. You can change the wallpaper. I would recommend using blurred wallpapers for this. And one of the apps I'm gonna be talking about later is an app which will automatically blur any wallpaper for you. This just means the text kind of pops off the screen and makes the whole thing look a little bit smarter. And if you go into the preferences, you can completely customize the color of the text. You can then also change the size of everything. So you can change the text sizes and also the margin sizes. And then one of the other really cool things it does is supports any font installed on your device. So by default with Android, you've got a bunch of them and a lot of them are really good looking. I tend to use the Roboto font, which is the font I use with a lot of my branding. So I'm gonna go for Roboto Bold, and there we go. Next on this list we have SD Made. This is an app I've used for a while and I should have included it in my how to speed up your Android phone video. If you haven't seen that, I will put a link to it in the description. But one of you guys in the comments, and I've completely forgotten your name, so I apologize, um, mentioned that if you want to clear your cache files and clear up junk files on your SD card, then SD Made is a really good app to do that for you. And I agree, um, I used to use it a lot. I stopped using it for no real particular reason but um, they reminded me of it, so I've reinstalled it and I'm gonna show it to you guys. So you've got a couple of options here. You can do Corpse Finder, which will get rid of all those junk files which remain on your SD card when you uninstall an app. You can then also do a system cleaner. This is predominantly pulling out um, cache files. There is also an app cleaner, which again is doing something remarkably similar, and databases as well. So they have all now run and you get a pop-up at the bottom and if I hit this now, it will clear off 411 megabytes. So I'm going to do that. And you twiddle your thumbs again. Boom, we're clear. There's also a couple of options on the side. You can do a little overview, which will give you an overview about your device. So this will tell you how much stuff you have free, whether you've got root, whether you've got BusyBox installed, your device number, all that good stuff. There is also a file explorer and this will let you look at files at a system level. There's also an option here which will get rid of duplicates. Quite often your device will accidentally save two versions of the same file and this will allow you really easily with one click to simply keep one version of that and clear the rest of them. And then finally, if you are running out of space on your device, you can use the storage analyzer and this will tell you what files are taking up all of the space on your phone. 
Next up we have Notify, and as I said earlier, I'm using a lot of home screen setups at the moment which are much more minimal, and a lot of them don't actually have a notification bar by default. So what I've started to use is Notify. This is effectively um, Facebook chat heads, kind of on steroids for any app you can imagine. So you can scroll through this list of all of your installed social apps and decide which ones can actually send you Notify notifications. It doesn't support a couple of apps, so WeChat, for example, isn't supported, and I don't think Google Allo is currently supported either. You can then play around with the size of the bubble that pops up. You can decide how much of it is offset. I have it set so you just see a slither of the bubble on the side of the screen. You can make it so that you can automatically close the bubble after you've opened the app. And you can also turn on grouping, which I recommend, which will combine all conversations of an app into one bubble. And you can decide whether or not you want these to appear on your lock screen. So, then when you receive a message, it will pop up on your home screen. As well as getting the bubble, you can then tap it and it will open a reply that you can quick reply to from any app. Next on this list we have Blur Wallpaper. You guys might remember Tholitis, it's an app I used to talk about a lot which would automatically blur your wallpaper and reset it for you. However, recently it's become kind of slow, it seems to like lag out on quite a lot of devices. So Blur is just another version of that that works really, really well. You have a slider which goes up and down here and the lower you go, the more blurred your wallpaper will appear. You can then hit these arrows and you can then also change the brightness. And then if you press once more, you get this option to change the amount of saturation. So if you go right to the bottom, your wallpaper will be black and white. And if you scroll up to the top, it will be in full colour. I love the attention to detail with this. The fact that all the little toggles are animated separately is just a really, really nice small touch, but it just looks really, really cool. You can then hit this button in the bottom right hand corner and this will set this new wallpaper for you. Next up, I have an app for all of you guys who are currently running Android N. This will let you customize the quick tiles in your notification bar. These are effectively like tiny widgets that you can run in your notification bar. So for example, if you want one that will immediately take a photo on your camera, you can drag this up there, hit the back button, and then go straight into the camera. The other cool thing with this is you can drag them to be even quicker to access. If you put them into the top five um, icons on this and then hit your home button, if you pull down your notification bar, you can see it will actually appear at the top of the screen and you can launch it with just a tap. Next on this list we have Snap and this will allow you to put widgets in your notification bar. You can either have this activating on the left, center or the right of the notification bar and you can also choose up to two at a time. It's super easy to customize, you just pull it down and then hit this gear icon. You then hit the little yellow plus button and you can select a widget as if you were just adding it to your home screen. So I am going to go down and add a YouTube subscriber widget that I've started using. So then you just tap, input any extra details for the widget. It will then appear in this list. You can then hold the little toggle here and drag it into place. So there you are guys, that is Snap, which will let you add widgets to your notification bar. Next on this list we have an icon pack, and that icon pack is minimal, um, or minimal -E. I'm not really sure there's an E on the end, but minimal E sounds like a really shit rave DJ. I'm going to guess it's minimal -E. There's an absolutely massive selection, and they are just beautiful, they're very minimal and they're very very colourful, and as I always say in these videos, if you're rocking anything with a super AMOLED display, the saturation on these is going to really really pop, and they're going to look absolutely beautiful. And as with all good icon packs, there is a nice selection of minimal wallpapers to go along with the icons. Next on this list we have AirDroid 3. AirDroid is an app I used to use quite a while back just to transfer files from my laptop to my phone and back again. It also supports notification mirroring. This means you can check all your notifications when you're on your laptop and with certain apps you can also reply. For some reason it also has a bunch of other things chucked in for it now. For example, it has a RAM booster for some reason because every single app seems to think that it needs to have a RAM booster. It's also got a screen recorder built in which is actually kind of cool. But the thing I really like about AirDroid and the reason that I'm putting on this list today is the fact that it has a new feature called Air Mirror. This will allow you to mirror your phone screen directly onto your laptop. It's currently not the quickest thing in the world, but as a proof of concept, it is really, really cool. It does mean you can respond to absolutely anything on your laptop, and it lets you use the laptop keyboard to control the phone. The other thing that Air Mirror does is rather than mirroring the whole screen, you can just get that keyboard access on your phone. This is great if you do a lot of writing on your phone or if you're sitting in a lecture or something and you're a student. If you want to be able to reply to a message without having to pull your phone out, Air Mirror and AirDroid is a really good way to go. 
And then finally on this list we have MuViz. You want to go ahead and turn it on and then choose one of these visualization styles. So I'm going to go for something a little bit simple. I'm just going to go for this green bar. You can then edit it if you want to. So you can change the different layers of the visualization and the different style, the shape, the color, the size, all that good stuff. Then if you hit go live, it will set it under your notification bar. The magic happens as soon as you start playing a song. So then you get this really nice visualization along the bottom of your screen. This is in the notification bar, so it will show in any app that isn't full screen. It's not perfect. It doesn't actually move particularly in time to the music, which is unfortunate. That'd be really, really cool, but I imagine it'd be intensely heavy on resources. But if you do want something to slightly jazz up your notification bar, then MuViz is a great option. So there you are guys, those are my top 10 apps for October 2016. Let me know in the comments below which of these apps you found the most useful. Also let me know in the comments below which apps you guys are using. I love hearing feedback from you guys and you've been commenting and subscribing and liking and stuff like crazy recently. It's been really, really good. It's really given me a motivational push to improve the quality of these videos and keep pumping out good content for you guys. So thank you guys for all of that. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it. You can follow me on my social media -y stuff with the links in the description. Quite a lot of you guys were asking what this pen is. It is a stylus made by a company called, let's get this into focus, called Savvy, Savify, Savif. It's quite difficult to pronounce a V and an F um, in English, but that is the stylus I'm using. It is dirt cheap and you can buy on Amazon through the links in the description. And if you do go ahead and buy anything through those links, you are helping out the channel because I get a very, very small cut as I'm an Amazon affiliate. So if you do want to see, uh, there, there. So if you do want to support the channel, you can buy anything through those links and that would be really, really appreciated. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.